Welcome back to the Roman Empire. When we last left off, Emperor Augustus Caesar, whose name translates to Emperor, 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 was, by any definition, an emperor. Whether he was the first was that video's question. Today we discuss the fall of Rome in hopes of answering, who was the last Roman emperor? If you can believe it, our story picks up right where the last one left off. As you recall, the rise of Rome involved the Middle East quite frequently. It's where Sulla went to war, where Crassus died, and where Marcus Antoninus lost popular support. Well, right now we cut to the Roman province of Palestina at about 0 AD. Yeah, it's time to tell that story. Palestine was technically a client state, so it wasn't technically part of Rome. It had an independent king, Herod. How did he manage to stay independent? Well, by being a massive sycophant. When he finally died, the Jews were more than happy to accept a Roman ruler if it meant no more Herods, and the Romans were more than happy to oblige. With Tiberius, Augustus' successor, after his first five choices died off early, appointed Pontius Pilatus as governor. At the same time, a man begins to rise in fame in Palestine a spiritual leader whose birth was foretold by the angels. That's right, it's John, the Baptist. He was impressive enough, but he always talked about a guy who was way better than him who was coming, and when he arrived, he didn't disappoint. This man, Yeshua bin Yosef, although he wasn't really the son of Joseph, went around all of Israel preaching, casting out devils, claiming to be the Messiah, that last part making the more orthodox Pharisees and Sadducees very mad at him. So, the Jewish Messiah is meant to rescue Israel from the Gentiles, who allied with the Orthodox Jews. They formed a mob, and when Pilatus failed to condemn him, they lynched him. They probably expected that to be the end of it. They were wrong. Three days later, the followers of Yeshua began claiming that he had risen from the dead. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter to this story whether that's true or not, but they certainly believed it. And so do I, so there's that. Pretty soon, they reignited the spark that Yeshua had set. The apostles, as well as a man named Saul of Tarsus, now Paul, went around all of Rome's dominions preaching and converting, and by this point, it was no mere sect of Judaism. It was its own thing. So, why am I telling you the story of Christianity? Well, in the last video, asking when the Roman Empire began was a question of when it became an empire. Asking when the Roman Empire ended was a question of when it stopped being Roman. And as you'll see, Christianity would become integral to Rome's identity. So back to Rome. Tiberius was really unpopular and he hated everyone, so when he died he was replaced by Caligula, who everyone liked, but then he went insane and tried to declare war on the ocean, and was assassinated by his guards who put Claudius on the throne, who declared war on Britain, which went much better. When Claudius died, he was replaced by Nero, who killed his mom and did nothing while a giant fire ravaged Rome, which people didn't like, so they supported a Spanish warlord named Galba, while Nero fled and committed suicide. But then Otto was mad that Galba didn't name him his successor, so he overthrew him. At this time, Vitellius was more with his legions to get revenge on Galba, but when he heard Galba was dead, he invaded anyways. But then Vespasian, who had been busy in the east dealing with unrest in Jerusalem, returned and overthrew Vitellius because he heard a prophecy from a Jewish leader he spared. All of that happened in one year. We have a lot of ground to cover, so you'll forgive me if I don't cover your personal favorite emperor. A common pattern is charismatic leader of the dynasty, slow decline, complete screw-up that opens the door for a dynastic change. Nero is the first of these screw-ups, and I'm gonna make an argument for a last emperor for every single one of them. Now, now, Nero was the end of the official line, the Julio-Claudians, but despite how these videos are focused, the emperor themselves isn't important to the character of an empire. When the Julio-Claudians collapsed into the Flavians, all the citizens saw was a bad emperor being swapped out for a good one. And so we continue. The screw-up of the Flavians was Domitian, who hated the Christians so much he turned into a religious zealot, so he was assassinated by the Senate. Domitian's deposing wasn't much different from Nero's, but the Senate's place in it is. Last time, the emperors were always opposed to the Senate, so them gaining power over the new emperor Nero should mark a return to Republic. But, in the first video, I suggested that the Senate's momentary lack of control under Sulla wasn't a true period of empire, so perhaps the Senate's momentary control under Nero wasn't a true Republic. The emperors did manage to regain control at least until bang, slow decline, and bang, screw up. Commodus was one of the biggest hits the Roman Empire took because he decided he wanted to be a gladiator. What's wrong with that? Gladiators are cool. Well, it turns out that if half a job description is get killed, people aren't exactly jumping at the chance to apply. Gladiators were slaves. Nobody liked the fact that the emperor was pretending to be a slave, nor that he was fast bankrupting Rome to support this fantasy. He was assassinated and the empire backslid. Septimius Severus took the reins of the government again and spent most of his time murdering people loyal to the old dynasty and trying to bring back Rome's former glory. It's also the 3rd century now, so I should start pronouncing it Severus. It didn't take very long for the Severan dynasty to decline because the women in the family were busy trying to get a weak man on the throne so they could be the emperors. And then Alexander Severus failed to do the one thing emperors are supposed to do, 
control the army. So was Alexander Severus the last Roman emperor? Well, his death marked a fundamental change in the conception of the Roman Empire. He was succeeded by Maximinus Thrax, a seven-foot-tall illiterate Thracian who only became emperor because he had military support. But that was kind of always how the emperor works. He was the populist as opposed to the elitist senate. And when the plebeians turned away, he always had the army, and so we continue onwards. What followed was a long string of soldier emperors, where the army declared their leader the new emperor, and then deposed him when he failed to give them land and pay. As wars continued in both Europe, Asia, and Africa, Rome began to split up. The country plunged into chaos for 50 years, and you could say it ended then. There were no legitimate claims to the line of Roman emperors. In fact, there was no line at all. Some historians do make this distinction. When Rome emerged from the chaos, people called it the dominant as opposed to the principate. You could make a lot of arguments here, that there's a Roman Empire versus the Roman Empire, that the Roman Empire refers collectively to these two and any other empires, or that one line of soldier emperors remained legitimate. Either way, the lines of soldier emperors were reunited in charismatic leader Diocletian, but then he had the idea to break Rome into two independent countries. Now, the idea was that the two empires would be cooperative, but that failed because the eastern half hated the Christians more and more, and the western half hated them less and less until Constantine, who was Christian. That crescendoed into a war that Constantina won, uniting the empire, which he changed into a Christian nation and moved the capital to Constantinople in modern-day Turkey. Now, I've always thought that calling Constantina's empire the Roman Empire is really stretching the definition of Roman. He's leading a nation governed by an Israeli religion from a place in Turkey. So, was Constantina the last Roman emperor? Now, I'm not so unreasonable as to say the definition of Roman can't change, but I do think it has to be tied to the city of Rome. But even as the political capital changed, Rome remained a cultural capital, so I'm more than happy to let it slide for now. Either way, slow decline until screw up Julian, who attempted an invasion of Persia, which went about as well as usual. Julian was Greco-Roman, not Christian, but I don't think Christianity had cemented itself well enough yet. The Valentinian dynasty walked on thin ice up against a bajillion threats, not least from each other, but Theodosius managed to stabilize, officially Christianize, and build massive walls around Constantinople. But it was already too late for the empire. When he died, it split again. Emperor Arcadius took the eastern half, and Emperor Honorius took the western half. Although both of them were like 12, so the empire was really ruled by the half-vandal general Stilicho and the Christian priest Rufinus. These two did not get along for a number of reasons, and the two Roman empires were driven further and further apart, both trying to puppet the other and seeing who would crack first. It was western. Western would crack first. Alaric the Visigoth was kicking around Rome and causing problems, so much so that the capital was moved to the more secure Ravenna. So now, Rome, the wealthiest city on earth, is unprotected. Alaric threatened a sack, and Stilicho gave payments. The Senate did not take kindly, so the newly mature Honorius kicked out Stilicho and ended the ransom payments. So then Alaric sacked Rome. What did they think was going to happen? There is certainly a very strong argument that Honorius was the last Roman emperor. If you, like me, attach the ability to be a Roman emperor to the city of Rome, then this is certainly the moment they lost control. Sure, they officially controlled it, but if you have to pay tribute to someone so they don't ransack you, you are not in control. And it didn't help that Alaric set up a puppet emperor, Priscus Attalus, to actually rule in Rome. What followed was the slow decline and lots of coups and counter-coups until Rome ended the way it began, with a Romulus. Romulus Augustulus handed over the imperial regalia to the east and abdicated in the year 476. His successor, the German Odoacer, declared himself king of Italy. Now, there's still an argument to be made by me that that still makes him the Roman emperor, but this video is long enough, and Rome is finally, officially, over. The position of emperor has come to an end, as has every position in the Roman government. Well, almost every.